He's a sign and giant and doing his thing. Hey woodworkers, I'm your buddy Dave. Welcome back to the Saws and Jaws workshop. This is part four of our five part Jigapalooza series on table saw jigs. This episode is called Ride the L. No, we're not going to ride an L train, but we are going to take a ride along a jig fence and I'm going to show you how to elevate your table saw cutting skills to a new level. Now oddly enough, our little jig is called the L fence. And with the L fence and your rip fence, I'm going to show you how to easily cut out shapes on your table saw that don't have a single 90 degree angle in it. That's going to be easier than you think. And no, you won't be using your miter gauge, you won't be using your band saw, and you won't be using your jigsaw. So none of this cutting it out close to the line and sanding, uh-uh, not going to do any of that. Also, we're going to show you how to straighten out the edge of a wany board, that is the rough edge. We're going to show you effectively how to joint your lumber using the L fence, clean, smooth, and fast. Sound interesting? Stay with us. Let's meet up on the table saw deck and make some sawdust. Hey woodworkers, we're back on the table saw deck. We're talking about riding the L. And here we go. Here is the L fence. We've got her uh, set up and almost ready to go. A couple of features about the L fence. What we've got here, the base of the fence here, is Baltic birch plywood, the 16 ply, beautiful, flat, and stable. We've got that uh, air nailed and glued into a backer. This is just a piece of three quarter inch pine. We've got a uh, inch in diameter hole at each end of the jig. And as you can see, that allows us to put the, uh, to clamp the L fence very tightly to our rip fence. The other key feature of the layout is to get the height of the fence right. And we do that by using our stock. We get the thickness of our stock. Plus I always keep a couple of 1 8 inch shims around. And we shim the fence up to uh, give us an eighth of an inch over the thickness of the stock. Doesn't matter what kind of stock it is. Then we raise the blade, dun dun dun, just so that it barely clears the bottom of the L fence. And if I slide my piece of stock in there, the work piece, you can see the teeth. Don't know if you can see that, but you can see that the teeth are clearing the fence. And that's perfect. That's going to be the perfect setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to joint this board, which has come from the lumber yard with kind of a very, hope you can see that, a very ugly, uneven edge. And we're going to joint this thing down to six and a quarter inches. We've got a nice flat square face here. We're a thickness plane almost to the thickness that we want. This is just a little over three quarters of an inch thick. And if you can see here, I've uh, marked off six and a quarter inches from this edge over to this edge. That's what we're going to cut off and joint. And we do that by using another little fence. Again, a three quarter inch piece of plywood, nice and flat. This is just a rub fence. We're going to attach the rub fence to our piece of uh, work piece, which is a piece of sapili, and we're going to use double-sided tape. We haven't talked about double-sided tape, but it's a very, very good jig material. It allows us to, to put this uh, rub fence tight to this work piece without marring it. This stuff really sticks. So what we're going to do, what I've already done is put three pieces down, and I've uh, rolled them out. I like to get a really nice tight contact with the, uh, the rub fence. Save you a little boredom there. I'm going to put the fourth piece on here, something like that. Make sure we get good coverage. Rub him down. Then we're going to peel these guys off. All right, so we've got our tape off, ready to flip the rub fence over. And the rub fence, again, is going to ride right along the edge of our L fence right there. Got a good side right here. Now I'm going to attach the rub fence to our marks at six and a quarter inches. Forward and backwards. Oh, that looks really good. And again, just take your roller, rub it down, just takes a second. Make sure you get a really good contact between uh, 
the rub fence and your workpiece, and that's not going anywhere. So that's what that looks like, and that little gap there is what we're going to cut off. So now we're going to start the blade, and we're going to make sure the rub fence stays tight against the uh, the face of the L fence, and then we're going to slide the cut through that way. Off behind the camera there, you can't see it, but I do have some outfeed support that's uh, going to uh, catch this guy as I exit the rear of the table saw so that it doesn't flop down. And again, the good thing about the L fence is cool. If you do wobble like that, you're not going to mar the good part of your workpiece. All you have to do is come back, start all over, and move it down. As long as you keep the rub fence tight to the L fence, you're golden. All right, so I'm going to stop John and start sawing. So here we go. Make some sawdust. see how we did oh goodness look at that so the L fence allowed me to joint that rough edge completely off hope you can see that little little burning there that usually happens but it's a little bit of sanding will take care of that we'll clean that edge up um, so that's a perfect joint with our L fence again using the rub fence so we're going to come back and we're going to show you how to cut out a shape that has no 90 degree corners in it. That's gonna be a real test for the L fence. We're gonna leave the setup the same. And there's our off cut. Ooh, forgot about the off cut. Yeah, so the off cut just falls away very cleanly. You're, you're not rubbing against the rip fence. Has tons of room to fall away there. So let's uh, be back in a second with our next setup. Okay, woodworkers, we're back for our second uh, demo. We're gonna cut out a very oddball shape. This is a trapezoid. We've got a shape that kind of comes up like this and then then around this uh, this edge of the rub fence. So we're going to do the rub fence. Uh, we're going to do cuts. We're going to cut four times. We're going to do what's kind of considered a traditional rip cut. And then um, a really cool thing about the L fence, you can also do a cross cut with it. And we're going to show that in just a second. So I've got everything set up. We're just going to use the same setup that we did when we jointed, so the blade's a little bit higher, but actually lets you see the teeth, how the teeth are nice and high above the, uh, the MDF. So this might be a, an MDF template you're going to get ready to make, or any, any oddball shape you want to cut out of, uh, out of a piece of wood. Again, no 90 degree corners in this thing, and we're going to cut it off without uh, using a bandsaw, because traditionally you might use a bandsaw to cut close to the line on these things, and then you'd have to sand it or file it to get it down close to the line. Might never get it perfect uh, with the L fence and our little rub fence here. We're gonna get a perfectly tight cut every single time. And uh, you won't really have to do any sanding um, on it at all. And uh, again, you could also put your miter gauge out there and play around with angles and try to cut it and hold this piece steady. Nah, this is probably gonna work a lot better for you. So let's do four quick cuts. We're going to ask our buddy Barry, our co-creator, he's probably going to speed these cuts up so uh, we don't waste a lot of your time. But here we go. One important aspect of the uh, L fence, you want to make sure that this off cut area here um, is not wider than your L fence. So this is all going to be waste in here and it's going to fall um, behind the blade. And you want to make sure that uh, that is not wider than your L fence. So here we're looking about a little less than three inches. We know our L fence is three and a half, so we're clear. So here we go. Cut number one. Put everything tight to the fence. Turn her on. Beautiful cut. Pop that off. Now let's do our first cross cut, pop the tape, and 
Now we're going to use um, one of these uh, push pads, just give us a little bit extra control on the cross cut. It is quite a bit shorter, but uh, pretty amazing. You can do a freehand cross cut with the L fence. So making some sawdust. I left the tape backing on because I didn't want to get a bunch of sawdust on the uh, this side of the tape. It would uh, reduce the stickiness of it. You need uh, all the stickiness you can you can muster. Okay, look at that. Put our little fence on our layout lines. Oh, it's looking good. Okay. Roll it out. When in doubt, roll it out every time. Here we go. Making some sawdust. So there you go. We cut that shape out pretty darn quick. We followed our layout lines and uh, those are flat, smooth, 90 degree edges. So you're not going to have to take that and do any sanding if that was the shape that you wanted. Um, pretty fast, pretty fast to get there. Yeah, so that is the, uh, get the off cut out of So that is the L-Fence folks. Again, key features. Our, our inch, and a inch and diameter, inch and a half diameter uh, slots for our clamps. We've got the blade raised almost underneath, uh, almost touching the bottom of the fence. That's key. We have the blade completely flush with this edge of the L fence. That's key. You got to jockey it back and forth. Maybe try a test cut or two. So that is. Um, that's it for this demo. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is a very cool fence. And uh, I just started using this about uh, two or three months ago. I made it. So very useful. If you remember the little Stuckley, Stickley, Gustav Stickley inspired bookcase we made, we used the L fence to cut out a template that was similar to that shape. So again, trapezoidal shapes, six sided shapes, doesn't matter. You can cut anything with the L fence. So that was our ride on the L. That's it. Until next time we see you back here at the Saws and Jaws workshop. Remember, we've got one more jig to do in our Jigapalooza. We're going to see that in our very next episode. See you then.